Good afternoon, everyone. We are here in the home stretch of theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024 here at the MGM. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co host. You mean it's almost over? It's almost, Dave, I know. No, it I makes know. me sad. I know. It's been a great show. It's been a great, it's been a great show. And it's about yeah. to get even better. Yeah. So we've got two great guests coming on the show. We've got Robert Snyder. He is the Intelligent Automation Manager at ConAgra Brands. Welcome, Robert. Very happy to be here. Thank you. And Vivek Sina, he is the Global Head of AI and Automation at Infosys. Thanks Thank so you. much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, my pleasure. You know, good to I'm going gonna, gonna to start with you, Robert. ConAgra Brands, I mean, it, it's kind of a household name, but tell our viewers just a little bit about your company how, and, and what you do there. Yeah, for sure. So uh, ConAgra Brands is a uh, food company, and what we do is we manufacture products for our customers, like your local grocery stores, and we have a host of brands that we uh, manufacture for our customers, including Ready Whip, Duncan Hines, um, Bird's Eye Vegetables, quite a few. A lot of the products in your grocery store, if you turn them around, you'll actually see our logo on the back. So maybe you'll find your favorite product actually is made by us. Uh, and last year we had over $12 billion in revenue. So we're a fairly good sized company and uh, we do it for our customers. Exactly, so, and you are as the intelligent automation manager, um, what do you do and what were sort of the challenges that, that you were finding that, that made you want to team up? Yeah, absolutely. So um, at ConAgra Brands, just like any organization, we're a very lean organization. And we have the challenge to do more with less. And with automation, robotic process automation and intelligent automation, it gives us tools that we need to continue to be competitive in a global marketplace. Um, UiPath had a unique set of tools that allowed us to expand our technology and our business processes to do them faster, more accurately, and assist our business partners. Ultimately, we want to make sure that people that are on the ground making our products, making our food, are able to do so without the need to worry about an invoice being paid in the back office or um, a process or a business process that they're waiting on to uh, ship in order to a customer. Uh, and we were able to successfully, with a partnership of Infosys, successfully automate quite a few of our back office uh, processes that allow us to be more efficient, more effective, and ultimately deliver our product faster. So Vivek, we live in a world, in the technology marketing world, where everything's seamless. <laughs> you know, what's the reality, and, and what role does Infosys play in actually facilitating and, and making things less complex and more facile? Uh, thank you, that's a great question. Uh, you know, as a way of introduction, Infosys has 300,000 plus people. You know, I lead the AI and the automation practice, which is approximately 3,000 people. Uh, the reason why I'm telling you those numbers is because some of the impact that we make is proportional to the number of people that actually get deployed in the projects, you know, AI and automation both. Um, so from that point of view, I think AI is here and now. Everything that I heard today, you know, starting with the, you know the keynote that was there, agent AI, you know, uh, my vantage point tells me that you know this is something that is coming our way, and you know it is here and now for us to explore and grow. Uh, there is huge ROIs that we think you know that everybody is looking from AI is is on us uh, to deliver. You know, you know let's, talk, let's talk about the ROI for a little bit because it's very clear the ROI of RPA was sort of a no-brainer. Largely back office functions, you're automating you know, a lot of paper shuffling, and it was pretty pretty clear, the the return. In AI, people complain, well, not really sure the a the ROI, we're doing a lot of experiments, we're, we're getting a lot of use cases and prioritizing them, you know, but it's going to be huge, right? And I believe it, by the way. Um, we've written a lot about it, but it's, it's, it's almost, you've got to take a leap of faith. Uh, so how do you help clients cross that chasm to use you know, that phrase. Right, and there is no secret sauce to it. It is hard work and grind that gets you. Uh, the biggest thing that I actually want to tell is, you know, uh, just because the compute and the data processing capabilities have increased so much that you can really do mundane tasks with, you know, lots of compute behind it. The reason, uh, you know, AI is so, you know, dramatic in terms of ROI influence that it can bring is because, uh, you know, it is an order of magnitude improvement that you can get. We typically engage with our customers. We, we have a very well-defined framework that we set aside saying, here is the right framework to choose the right use cases to do AI, continuously monitor and measure, and then uh, you know, 
present the results to the board and the CEO organization that is looking for those ROIs and benefits. So identifying the right use cases is, I think, the biggest uh, mantra for success in the AI world. And Robert, when you sort of initiate, a, or have an initiative like automation, you obviously have to present a business case. You got to sign up for some value. You got to deliver that value. Um, and so, how do you think about the trade-offs of, you know, potentially, it's sort of a pejorative, but paving the cow path. In other words, making an existing process better, but getting value out of it, versus something that's a more sort of substantial transformation where you could create telephone numbers for the organization. It's riskier. How do you balance that? In regards to balancing risk between, if I'm understanding your, correct, uh, your question correctly, between new technology and existing capabilities, you really have to identify a framework on how you want to identify the work that's going to be placed in front of you. And then you have to bring your business partners along. You have to tell them and show them the art of the possible. There's a lot of talk around AI and generative AI and a lot of people that aren't as familiar with what the tools and the processes could do for them. So the first step is to get your business partners excited about the opportunity to partner with yourself and other uh, COEs that can help um, define and uh, accomplish those business processes that you're trying to um, automate for the business. So, are you hitting singles or are you shooting for the moon? <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it comes down to, again, putting together a framework in which you can identify um, potential business use cases. And once you get to the business use cases, you can look at AI capabilities and categorizations and start to basically bucket these ideas into these different um, capabilities and frameworks, and that gives you a direction for your organization to begin either looking for partnerships to enable those types of technologies, or start looking for an off-the-shelf type of solution like UiPath. And what UiPath really gives us is the ability in a known and trusted platform that we have today to enable further technology like document understanding, computer vision, um, agentic AI agents uh, that we saw today, some self-healing robots, that was very cool. We're very excited about that, by the way. And um, be able to use those bolt-on capabilities with the trust that we already have in the platform that's delivering for us today. Um, and again, just, I'm very atypical, so I like to categorize things. So we, we take these ideas from our business partners, we figure out what is going to be the ROI, what's going to be the rev revenue generation, and then we categorize those capabilities and we say these are the ones we're going to try to tackle next. T tell me about the, 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 the self-healing um, robots. Uh, what problem does that solve for you and why are you so excited about it? Well, just like any RPA automation that's out there today is you work with user interfaces and there's always going to be improvements from the development team that creates those user interfaces or changes. And we work with a lot of vendor portals because we work with a lot of customers. We have to notify them when their product's ready for pickup, maybe some other use cases where we're getting information from them to schedule um, product delivery from us, um, and their portals may change. And what happens is the robot um, doesn't know how to handle that nuance in that UI. And what we saw today allowed us to really imagine a world where the automation's telling our support team what they need to do. How can they solve this in a shorter time frame and get us back into an operated state? Um, you know, UiPath was the leader in the market before that in its exception handling, being able to handle business exceptions and system exceptions and get us at least a head start. But this is taking it to that actionable thing, to that agentic AI where not only is it notifying, but it's giving a recommendation and assisting with the solve. It's pretty remarkable. So, Vivek, you are a transformation partner. Can you describe what it is that you actually do in working hand in glove alongside Conagra and other clients, of course, but how do you define your role and how do you help contribute to, to their success? Uh, uh, thank you for that. 
from from Infosys point of view, we typically partner with our customers, and Robert has been one of the outstanding leaders that we have worked with for so long. You know, he helps us keep us grounded as well, right? Uh, but the things that we typically do, uh, at, and the same thing we did in Conagra was we established a center of excellence. So because we have done similar projects for so many other customers, we bring that knowledge that we have to our customers. And in case of Conagra, Conagra we actually helped in initially setting up the center of excellence that brings in, you know, framework elements. You know, how do you how do you evaluate a particular business case in terms of KPIs and measurements? How do you how do you make sure that the templates and frameworks for code reviews and deployment procedures and et cetera are actually you know uh, implemented in the best possible way and so on and so forth so from infosys point of view we you know we kind of bring all the expertise of having done this before at other places to our customers and help them you know scale and grow and um, in that respect uipath has been also a great partner they continuously enable us in the new platforms and tools and technologies I'm really excited that in a couple of weeks, I will have my hands on the agent studio from UiPath. And so we'll be able to build some uh, you know, cool agents using agent AI framework that UiPath provides. So looking forward to it, you know. Thanks. So, uh, you know, the agents today are co-pilots. Is usually, typically today, you see single agent, single co-pilot. And it's it kind of interesting. Agentic division is laying out, you know, what Bobby Patrick called, and we've written about swarms of, of agents working together. How are you thinking about the, the use cases around that? Craig LeClaire laid out sort of a, a risk reward framework today. How do you sort of prioritize any thoughts, initial experiments that you're running that you can share? What are the best use cases like initially for Agentic? So we have, and I don't know if I can go to too much detail, but we receive um, emails from our customers that request to get um, deductions on their invoices. And a part of that is taking that documentation, and we're a large SAP shop, and actually financially clearing those deductions through our processing tool. But that process is very manual, because if you can imagine the number of grocery stores that exist in our country, um, they all send a different type of document, right? Or a different type of way of requesting this sort of uh, deduction. So I see the potential, and this is just one of many examples, to be able to assist with the categorization, the identification, as well as potentially the execution, the deterministic execution, right? Because we don't want it to accidentally enter in the wrong value and then they don't owe us as much money, right? That would be bad for revenue. But we need a way to help us to um, get to that point or speed up that process for both, you know, assisting our customer service, assisting our customers, reducing the workload for the employees that are manually doing this today. Um, and that's just, again, one of many. And so I see opportunities where the input of the process or even maybe the, the aftermath of the process isn't so clear as it would be in a deterministic model where we can apply this technology and leverage a deterministic model to actually complete the outcome. So what's the business logic that goes into that deduction? Is that, and is, where does it come from? Is it tribal knowledge? And how do you incorporate that into an automation or, or an, an agent? So the agent wouldn't necessarily clear the deduction. The agent would use our existing automations to clear the deduction. But the problem is that the input Right, we get a you know five thousand of these, let's say, and they're all from five thousand different customers. The input is so um, non-deterministic that we need a way to to categorize it into the right execution model. Um, and I think that the agentic AI can get us to that final step of being able to really identify and take that cognitive um, process out to say, okay, this deduction belongs to this customer, so I'm gonna process it this way because it's this type of deduction. This deduction belongs to customer B because it's this type of deduction, so I'm gonna uh, process it that way. It's almost um, deterministic somewhat in nature, but the rules become so complex that using an agent to get us to that point will allow us to then execute uh, the deterministic RPA and execute it accurately and properly. So there are some clear conditions under which a deduction is applicable. Correct. And and you can 
program machines, essentially, or allow machines, enable machines to do that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we've talked around it, but I'd love you to talk to call out any benefits or any wins that you've seen in terms of customer experience, in terms of helping employees get back hours of their day, um, cost savings, efficiency. What what else? Are, what are you What are you seeing already? I mean, in regards to intelligent aut automation and automation, you know, there's a joy that you get from being in a program like this that you get to see employees become happier. Um, you know, we had a business process in which Infosys and us partnered with many years ago to help close our financial um, financials for each of our plants. And our business partners spent a long time doing this. and It was a very complex process. And we've gotten it down to four hours instead of a week and an army of people to do this. And the team is just so ecstatic about the fact that it's accurate, it's on time, they can monitor it, they can see what it's doing, and it allows them freedom to work on the more, um, ta the, I guess, the more important tasks that add revenue to our organization. And they can find ways to make other processes better and faster and easier. Um, the financial close process before was very tedious and they, it was not their favorite thing to do, <laughs> right? So um, seeing those types of successes and wins is very rewarding for both an automation center of excellence as well as the business. So last for both of you, what do you see as, as ConAgra's future plans in terms of its digital transformation and how do you see things progressing from here? Do you want to start, Vivek, I mean, yeah. as the partner? <laughs> I would. You know, the North Star that we should probably, you know, aim for is how do we get Agent DGI in inside Conagra as quickly as possible, try, experiment, fail, learn from that, and scale from there. You know, um, one of the use cases that we have been uh, talking about and doing is in the software development lifecycle itself. Like, you know, you write these automation scripts and the requirement comes from a business user. Is there a way for us to kind of shorten that requirement cycle time, take less time from business, from their busy work, and, you know, generate the user stories, you know, right? Is there a way for an agent to create the code from those documentations that is there and so on and so forth? So there are multiple use cases like this. I would I would like to, you know, start that journey of agent DGI in Conagra in the very near future, you know? Yeah, I'm very excited about all the things he said. <laughs> Anything that <laughs> delivers faster is gonna gonna be a success for us. Um, for our immediate future, we're investing in document understanding, communication mining, um, as well as process mining. So we're very excited about those technologies and how those are gonna benefit our organization. That deduction use case being a very clear, um, you know, document understanding uh, use case, as well as others, uh, helping us with our receipts, helping us with um, our in voices and different things in our organization. Excellent. Well, if, 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 one last question, yeah. Robert. If there were one thing that you'd like to be able to say next year, a year from now, that you can't say today, what would that be? That I can't say today? You can't say today, but you'd like to it's not happening say, yet. It's oh, like, yeah, from now. Yeah. Next, dream, next year's goal. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, you know, one thing that I thought about uh, this year and last year when I attended was it would be pretty darn cool if you could have autopilot take a PDD and build the automation via RE framework. You think that's achievable inside of 12 months? I think it is. I think you guys have the technology. Those guys. <laughs> yeah. I think UiPath has yeah. the technology, and I use some acronyms there. A PDD is a process document, yeah. um, and uh, you know it, it can really speed up the development and delivery of an RPA product, and I think that would be very beneficial. Cool. To, thank you, Blair. Excellent. Yeah. Robert and Vivek, both. Thank you both yeah. so much for a really fun conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Great time. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of the Cube's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. You're watching the Cube, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.